Welcome to Talking About. I'm John Griffith. I'm Cara Kilduff. I'm JC Albers, and I'm terrified. <laughs> Here we get a little, well, pseudo therapy session going on. Uh, we're actually hosting, so uh, our guest <laughs> is uh, Scott Kramer, uh, psychotherapist. Is yes. the actual title? Yep, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Okay. And psychotherapist is just another way to say that. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Thank you. I'm glad show. to be here. Which is something that that sometimes um, people get kind of scared when when uh, when they're approached by the fact that maybe they need some kind of therapy in their life. Mm -hmm. But actually, really, it does a whole lot of good. Yes, it does. And you know, you, you d definitely work with the LGBT community and, yes. and do a service for the community. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Um, well, I work in the LGBT community. Uh, those are most of my clients, but not all of my clients. And um, originally, when I started off, um, I was working with LGBT youth, uh, teenagers, and it was really fantastic. It was wonderful. Um, now that I've opened my private practice, I'm working with adults, and the issues are very different um, that I see. Uh, the issues aren't school-related or so much bullying-related, but they're more relationship, anxiety, depression, mm. um, HIV, things like that. So that's what I'm seeing now, and uh, but I really love working with my individual clients and my, my group work too. It's, it's really amazing, and sometimes people just need to have a space where they can feel safe and express themselves yeah. in um, a place that is going to be non-judgmental and is going to be um, caring and supportive. You know, a lot of people don't get that, especially in New York. Yeah, I, sometimes you just have to um, be able to find that space where you can um, sh just release the grievances of the week, the, the work mm -hmm. pressures, uh, mm -hmm. relationship pressures that might happen. Um, you know, uh, you had mentioned before that you d deal with a lot and w work a lot with with our with um, gay youth. Yeah. And um, certainly within our community in the last year, the way that we look at our gay youth has changed. The dynamic has changed. Mm -hmm. um, but but we were talking earlier about something that's really interesting, and that's the coming out experience. You're saying how that's right. very different. Absolutely. Um, I was working at an organization that's connected very closely with a high school. And so there would be young people that would be coming out at 12, 13, 14 years old. It was really quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes their parents would be accepting and sometimes not. And so what they would come to me with was issues around being scared about coming out or mm -hmm. being out or uh, the possibility of being rejected by their straight peers. Um, where I was working, there wasn't so much bullying going on, but I know that that is absolutely a huge issue right now. Mm. There's a lot of it um, yeah. for young people on Facebook. Well, it's, it's always been there, but it's it's yeah. coming it's coming to light a lot more. Absolutely, it's just so much easier to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's not really um, you can do it anonymously now. Yeah, it's not always just name calling in the hallways. It's um, text. It's Facebook. It's all of those things, um, and like so it happens for all of It's like, it's like bullying on place. steroids. Yeah, yeah. Um, to a whole new new level. Definitely. It, you know, that's 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 really. I, I think it's wonderful that gay youth are, are embracing it and and sort of identifying so young. Mm -hmm. uh, from your perspective, especially dealing because you know you are a, a professional, do you think that is a very healthy for a young person to be beginning to I identify themselves as a as a gay person so young and so quickly? Is that a healthy process? Um, I think it's healthy if they're ready for it. Uh, so it, it really depends. Everyone is different. Everyone's on their own path. So whether they know that they're gay earlier or decide to come out earlier, that's all their decision. And so if they come to me and they're not sure if they want to come out yet, but they understand what their sexual orientation is, um, we go over issues of safety, over issues of um, disclosure, is it going to be okay? Are people going to reject me? Are people going to kick me out, mm. um, either of the house or of their lives? Mm. So it could be really, really scary. And that's not just for people that are teenagers, but also adults. Because a lot of teenagers are coming out earlier these days, um, it makes 
it much more difficult for people in their 20s and 30s and even older to come out because they feel this stigma around, well, I wish I would have done it earlier. Mm. And they feel like they can't. And then they feel like they've waited too long and uh, it's just a very difficult thing. It's like they feel like teenagers all over again. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And I, I've become reacquainted with somebody who is actually, yeah, post-marriage, post-kids, mm -hmm. just beginning to explore that side of himself. And yeah, it's, he's going at his own pace and mm -hmm. yeah, I bite my tongue a lot. <laughs> Just because I know it's it's his process, not mine. Mm. Right, right. And so it's you know if if you're friends with somebody, um, it's easy to say, do this, do this, do this. But um, as a psychotherapist, I want them to explore their own options. My idea of what might be right for them might not be their idea of what's right for them. So client self determination is really one of the most important things that I have to remember as I'm sitting with people, um, not telling them what to do. Mm. What if they ask you directly, hey, what do you think? What do I do? Do you offer up your opinion at that point, or do you still like... I still try to redirect, um, because I think that they know um, mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. in there. And I can give them options, and we can even do a pros and cons list. That is so helpful. People don't realize how helpful that is. But I oftentimes say, well, what would be good about coming out? And then what would be bad about coming out? And, and oftentimes there's one bad thing. And there's a whole bunch of good things, but that bad thing weighs much more than the good things. Mm -hmm. And so um, that makes it really scary. I'm really scared to come out. And you know, that could be about coming out about being gay, being transgender, being HIV positive. All of those things uh, can be terrifying to somebody. Mm -hmm. So I think that even when we're talking about being friends with somebody, just to try and be as accepting as possible because you never know what's going on with somebody, right? And so if someone, say someone um, is HIV positive and they want to come out or are thinking about it, if you've said stuff in the past that was maybe not so positive, positive mm -hmm. yeah, then that could be much more difficult if the person then does zero convert or if the person has been positive all along mm -hmm. and just hasn't come out yet. And, it, and that's an interesting uh, notion as well, because we like to think, or at least, um, you know, we're, we're all a, a group of, of really big free thinkers and, mm -hmm. and you know, very accepting of, of people in our community. And that's something that we present on the show, you know, every month with, with our guests. Uh, but certainly, uh, and we say always to our guests, you know, this is a very safe space uh, to come into, that some people feel that they don't necessarily live in a safe space where they can mm -hmm. just basically um, come out and be accepting. What are some of the issues that you've come with your clients that, um, that are just recently discovered that they're HIV positive? What are some of the things that they're facing, some fears that, that are common amongst them? Sure. Um, well, when someone initially gets their diagnosis, I think what I found is that a lot of times they just go to a very dark place and they go to a place that was the 80s, right? Oh. They still think, I'm gonna die. I'm untouchable. I'm never gonna have a life. I'm never gonna have kids. All of this stuff um, still comes into play. Um, it's still not an easy thing to be diagnosed with HIV in this day and age. Mm. Um, and then after that, what we usually work on is ways to integrate HIV into them into their sense of selves, mm -hmm. and that can be a really difficult thing too. Um, but I was working with someone who was recently diagnosed, and he couldn't even say HIV, mm -hmm. couldn't even say it, and then. A couple of weeks into our um, therapy sessions, he met someone and he said, oh yeah, I told him, you know, I'm living with HIV. And I said, what? Like, you haven't even said that in here yet. <laughs> you know, and he's telling a potential partner. And we're moving in next week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's fabulous, fantastic, you know. And so things like that do happen and it's wonderful when they do, mm. when they do. That's um, like leaps and bounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. You know, you, you sort of have to balance whether that's too fast or too slow and, and how that's working for the person. Um, but there's a lot of processing that goes on around that. Same thing when someone has to start taking medication. Mm -hmm. Same thing when someone has to disclose. If disclosure is a huge issue with HIV. Um, it's another form of coming out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it, you really can equate it the, mm -hmm. the same way. There's fear of rejection, uh, fear of isolation fear of all that kind of stuff. Of intimacy and, so, and, and just uh, acceptance and yeah. rejection all over again. And how do we make this yeah. work? 
and um, you know, there's there's a lot of now in the LGBT community meeting on the apps, right? Grinder, Scruff, and all of the other ones. Cardinal's all about that. <laughs> I never heard of Scruff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they need to make one for lesbians, don't they? Oh. <laughs> Do they have one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> TacoParty.com. <laughs> That's your next project. I'll be back in a month. I'll be creating apps for the, the ladies. <laughs> um, and those apps, you know, they still say disease and drug free. Or a whole uh, other level of clean. stigma that's being created. Right. We've had guests on the yeah. show that, like, yeah, I, I yeah. talk about the, the using the word clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. drug and disease free. To, yeah. 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 Yes, too. I showered like, today. What do you mean? Yeah, I showered today. I'm right. clean. Yeah. Right. And it really, it's a huge stigma, and it makes mm. people feel really, really bad. And yeah. so um, I would Which say Which makes you think that. how many people are, are still kind of ignorant about, yeah. about a lot of things within our community. Mm -hmm. um, even, even, um, even drug use, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. crystal meth is something that's, again, rampant in our community. Yeah. And I've seen, it, I've seen it being used not only um, from my generation, but finally enough younger people mm -hmm. are, are, are getting into crystal meth and it's sort of like just think that it's it's okay or just yeah. part of yeah. part, just part of being just part of their gay uh, life yeah experience. like drug use has to be a part of being gay yeah. that's just mm -hmm. so false yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's still out there and one of the reasons I was originally wanting to go to social work school is because back then crystal meth was the big thing it was it was the big thing that was taking over the gay community and killing us all and by the time I got out of social work school that wasn't even really in the news. So I thought, oh, well, maybe it's over. So let's go work with young people. Uh, and now that I'm working with adults, <laughs> I'm see and I really didn't see it, maybe in one client in six years and working with young people. But now that I'm working with adults, I'm seeing it more and more, people trying it for the first time. Mm. Um, and not so much in the clubs or anything. It's not a, really a club drug, mm -mm. Um, but doing it to numb out mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, you connect it with sex and uh, all of that kind of stuff, and, and it could be really scary. Mm. Um, it, crystal meth really destroys lives, mm. and so we really need to get a handle on this. Yeah, and and also, you know, let's let's. Um, are you? Do you also work with couples? I mean, especially now with yeah. with our changing community. You know, we're getting married, we're raising families. Mm -hmm. uh, are, is this now a new dynamic that you're being presented with? Um, you know with working with couples absolutely yeah um, I work with even though I the majority of my practice is LGBT clients um, I see uh, our straight allies as well and so um, I, see I hate my gay neighbor <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I love him, but I can't stand him. No, I'm just kidding. He's such yeah. a fan. <laughs> <laughs> help oh, me, doctor. No. Help me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I, um, I work with a straight couple, and I work with uh, several gay couples, um, and also couples that are figuring out what to do if one of them happens to be um, exploring their sexual orientation. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And also serodiscordant couples. Mm. That's where one couple is HIV positive and the other couple is HIV negative. And there's lots of very specific issues that might be going on there, too. Mm -hmm. So we work those out. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's so interesting. You're like a real-life superhero. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> <no. laughs> clients are the superheroes. I wouldn't be here um, if they didn't need some sort of support. Mm -hmm. So I, I love what I do. Um, you know, I thank my husband so much for supporting me through school. Like, I was able to quit my job and go to school full time, um, and he supported me through that whole process. So I'm just happy to be here and happy <laughs> to do what I do. It's thrilling every day. That's great. And back to young people and yeah. HIV so much. Do you, do you find a lot of young people making informed and proper decisions about their own sexual health and well-being? Mm. Mm. Or, or are they rolling the dice a lot more than they should? They know the information, they know what to do, but many times they're feeling like we might have felt in high school. Like, I, wanna, I want this person, and I want to do whatever it takes order to get this person. And so if that means sometimes not using protection, then mm. that's what happens. Um, a lot of the young people don't know about PrEP, which is what you take. You can, it's a medication, it's an HIV medication that you can take um, daily 
in the hopes of preventing HIV transmission. It's almost like the pill for women but to you, prevent. But it's, it's recommended if you feel that you've been in, uh, in a Infected, dangerous then situation, you can do, or right. then you can take that risk. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's post-exposure okay. prophylaxis, and within 36 or 72 hours, you can go to a hospital and get that medication. So, 28-day course of um, HIV medication in the hopes that HIV won't bond to your system. But in talking about young people. Um, you know, there, there's so much work on prevention, and I think that it has to do more with the mental health aspect, the how they're feeling about themselves, mm -hmm. self-esteem, self -respect, mm -hmm. yeah. self-respect, mm -hmm. all of that kind of thing, and uh, that's where we really need to focus. Um, the money now that's coming from the government and all different kinds of agencies that are going to nonprofits in terms of prevention work is more about linkage to care for HIV-positive clients. So there's a little bit less coming in for prevention and more coming in to link. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I, I, I certainly think that, you know, people are forgetting that message, um, especially in this day and age where, where you know, our, our community has so many eyes on it, uh -huh. that, you know, you really do, you know, it's, it's all about how much you love and respect yourself. That's where it really starts. And, you know, rubbers, you know, condoms, mm -hmm. uh, safe sex is still sexy sex. Dental dams. Mm -hmm. uh, dental dams. <laughs> Finger knots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's like I remember, <laughs> I, I mean, for me growing up, uh, certainly I, I came out after high school, mm -hmm. but when I, was, um, when I was learning about sex and sex practices while in high school, um, you know, they were telling us about how, how really safe sex practices can, can be very positive things mm -hmm. in new relationships, and I think that young people maybe aren't thinking that anymore. I mean. Sure, absolutely. I mean, there's condoms available everywhere. Is I everyone like using them? I got 20 in my bag if someone needs some of them. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, I mean, that's your water <laughs> balloon supply. <laughs> it is, it is. People aren't using them as, as um, effectively as they could be or mm -hmm. as much as they might want to, um, to protect themselves. Um, that's why PrEP is really so important because mm -hmm. it's an added layer of protection. You're taking a medication ongoing, you know, to hopefully prevent that. But it, it is an added layer of protection, so mm. yeah, it's so definitely something worth thinking about. Where can people find out a little bit more about you and the services you provide? Mm. About me, so I have a website, um, okay. scottakramer.com, that's with a K, so Scott A K R A M E R dot com, and uh, that's the best place to find me. Okay, and there's a wide variety of information? Yes, it, okay. it says uh, exactly what I do, the groups I run, um, it has information about my individual work, mm -hmm. uh, my couple's work, um, it's all up there. Yeah. That's great. I mean, you're doing so much for so many people, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. I hope you didn't leave any patients hanging to come here not. tonight. <laughs> I did not. You're okay. on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I take very, very good care of my clients. Um, and like I said, because I really like them all, too. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're really good people, um, and sometimes they just need some support. That's yeah. all. Okay, That's and all. yeah, we're happy to be able to support you. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Anytime. Yeah, uh, please come back. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, and you good. can uh, find out more about uh, Scott and more about us on our website, which is www.talkingabout.info. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm John Griffith. I'm Cara Kilda. And I'm still JC Alvarez. <laughs> that hasn't changed. And we'll see you again next time. So stick around, check out our website, check out his website. And we love you. Bye. <laughs>